Hey everybody, it's Ann Beebe. Today is uh, Friday, February 7th, 2020. I'm Barb Hammer. Um, I haven't done a video for over a week and I apologize. I'm always apologizing, but I'm still stuck in this hotel room, but only until Monday, but I'm apparently going back to uh, an unfinished apartment uh, with uh, practically no plumbing, no toilet, no shower, um, no linoleum, unfinished drywall that uh, uh, creates dust. Um, so it's a nightmare. Um, and I, 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 may, I recorded a video in the apartment yesterday. I haven't uploaded it. Um, but anyway, I don't want to talk about the day. I'll talk about that another time. Anyway, I wanted to do a follow-up video to Scott Creighton's video on his Church Dog 42 channel. So um, he had tipped me off that he was not buying the story about the coronavirus doctor, the whistleblower, whose name is, um, is I've forgotten now, it's Lee, Lee Wenliang. Li Wenyang. I will show you his picture. So um, they are using his, this is it, Li Wenyang. Um, so Scott did the video uh, pointing out about um, how the, the, the story just doesn't hold up and it's being used as propaganda in Western mainstream media. Now, when he tipped me off, I did say that when I was looking at the details um, like I saw the, I had actually retweeted the announcement that he supposedly died, but the part of the story that I didn't like from the start was they were calling him a whistleblower and, um, that he had been arrested by Chinese police. Now, I know to be very suspicious, uh, of whistleblowers. Um, I'm not a whistleblower. I did work in the intelligence community and people constantly use that against me and say, oh, you're a co-intel pro. And I'm supposedly, you know, an intel asset because I'm criticizing their hero, Max Blumenthal and his bunch. And, uh, and it's just ridiculous. So there are all these accounts that seem to be protecting Max Blumenthal for some reason in social media. Um, so anyway, I just, I, I did retweet the story that he died, but nothing about, you know, he's a whistleblower and about the police being involved. So I didn't really know the whole story. And so Scott said, oh yeah, the whole story is just uh, bullshit. And uh, so he explained in his video about how it was being manipulated. And there's definitely an agenda. And the agenda just kind of um, undermine the Chinese government. You know, sometimes it's very subtle and unfortunately a lot of times it comes from within china so western intelligence and regime change ngos are um have been a big problem in china and they pour a lot of money into china and try to buy people off um to make them propaganda assets there's another one that i have in mind i will talk about another time but i think the story at least the story, at least, Scott is right, you know, and I had my misgivings about it, is that, um, you know, who knows what the reality is. is. Is he dead? We don't know. They fake deaths all the time. And um, I know for a fact, uh, so CIA, what I call CIA military academic, uh, Gene Sharp, who passed away a couple of years ago, um, he's the godfather of the color, color revolution at PSYOP, where they try to make... Uh, regime change operation look like a popular uprising. And part of that is to fake deaths um, and um, funerals and, you know, anything. Oh, you know, this person, this hero died. And anyway, so that's part of the PSYOP. So I kind of think that this death of the whistleblower, the hero, um, is part of that PSYOP um, construction that, uh, Gene Sharp came up with. Anyway, the, what else? So I was suspicious, but Scott picked up on more about the story and good for him. So he did that video and I will provide the link in the show notes. If you haven't seen it, I'm not going to go through all that, but he was showing a lot of things. There was a document he showed and he realized after he'd done the video, um, that it, 
there were uh, red fingerprints which on um, a police document. Uh, and apparently that is standard procedure in China. So uh, he didn't know that at the time, but he, he realized that when he uploaded the video. But, you know, it's it's a hassle doing these videos. I know how it is. You know, if you say something and then you upload and you're like, oh, why did I say that? You know, that's just the way it is. Anyway, so apparently, uh, so anyway, they the Chinese authorities are actually uh, going to conduct an investigation into this whole story about this doctor who died. Um, and it's not that they think necessarily that local authorities did something wrong, although they may have, they're going to investigate those story, but I think they're, I think this, this, uh, new story kind of indicates that they're not sure about this whole story. And here's why. Um, there's, you know, his name is all over mainstream media. So you're going to see, I know, uh, Lee, Lee Wenliang's name all over the place. Here's a name you're not going to hear about. So this woman um, received, she is also a, a, a doctor in, in Wuhan. But unlike this guy, uh, Lee Wenliang, who's an ophthalmologist, a, an eye specialist, this doctor, and her name is uh, Zhang, Zhang, Ji, Zhang Jixian, and I apologize if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, um, but Dr. Zhang, 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 Zhang Jixian, um, she is a specialist in uh, respiratory um, diseases and critical care. So she's a specialist and she got a lot of experience back during the SARS outbreak in 2003. Um, so that's how she knew, you know, she saw the first indications of a respiratory disease that she hadn't seen before. And so she, um, she uh, gave the first warning about it. And she did this before Dr. Lee supposedly did, the whistleblower. So you're not gonna see, I did a search on her and she's definitely not in Western mainstream media. So um, she's the, <laughs> so you know, you know, the real heroes you just don't hear about or very little. So this is the lady. So she tipped off, um, she was tipped off. She saw um, a fever and cough on December 26th. And that's before Dr. Lee was um, supposedly blowing the whistle and spreading the, and warning people. Um, yeah, so she's received an award and I'll just give, I'm not gonna go through all the details, but she, um, she's re received an award and um, this account, I have to thank this account on Twitter and I noticed, um, a comment uh, by a different name on Scott's video, but I know it's the same person. So I'm going to give a little credit to um, this account who whose wife whose wife is Chinese. So um, he saw me starting to talk about this on Twitter after Scott had tipped me off, and so he's got this screenshot of some of the details. So. Um, it says, I'm sorry, it's hard for me to read here. Um, so yeah, on the 26th, between the 26th and the 29th, Dr. Zhang uh, discovered a potentially new disease uh, and reported the disease to the government. And the government ordered, on the 30th, the government ordered local hospitals report cases of patients with certain symptoms. And then on the 30th, Dr. Lee is... Um, He's not, a, he, he's not a specialist in this field. And so he thought it was SARS and he starts raising the alarm and he starts spreading a lot of information. And so that's why he was arrested, I guess, because, um, you know, they don't want to panic. They, you know, the, the government, the Chinese government is very responsible. They're not trying to suppress information, but they're being very um, responsible and just doing, conducting normal procedures in such, a, in a case like that. So that's why he got arrested for, I guess, you know, he was spreading misinformation or they, 
I don't know. But the the cops have been he's been cleared. Um, Chinese Supreme Court or something they cleared him, but um, and you know the 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 police were just doing their job. But you know uh, the Chinese authorities are not heavy handed, so they. Um, cleared Dr. Lee, and I don't know if he's dead or not. Supposedly he died, and that's too bad if he is. Who knows? You know, in these situations, he, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's it's being used for propaganda, so it's hard to say what the truth is about Dr. Lee. But um, it's being used as propaganda, and so you're going to hear all this all this information about Dr. Lee, but nothing about Dr. Zhang. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, so when I did a search, the only thing I found was uh, Microsoft MSN, so Microsoft News, they republished uh, a report from Xinhua News Agency. So all the other reports I found were like from um, Indian news outlets, uh, news outlets from India. Um, but I, you know, it would, if I went through the search, more of the searches, if, if I went through the search results more, I probably would, I might find it buried somewhere but this is the only one that popped up right away whereas dr lee he's he's reported everywhere so anyway this is actually mentioning two doctors in in hubei um province where Wu, the city of wuhan is located so two doctors and i know one of the other one is a man and he actually suffers from lou gehrig's Gehr disease als but he's still been working on the front lines and um they haven't died. <laughs> they haven't died. They've just been so. His name is Doctor is Zhang too. Same family name as uh, the other doctor has. So Doctor Zhang Denyu. Um, yeah. So he suffers from ALS. Um, so they both were awarded. So she was the first one. Uh, so both Doctor <laughs> Doctors Zhang are. If you want heroes, these are the heroes. So she detected this uh, coronavirus strain first, and you know because from our experience with SARS, because SARS is is a type of coronavirus. Coronavirus is like common cold, and the problem is that uh, uh, in the with coronavirus, people are getting pneumonia, and that's what's killing them. It seems to be. You know, there are a lot of diseases that actually it's something else that kills you. So a lot of AIDS patients, they get pneumonia and they die from the pneumonia. And also I know in a lot of dementia patients and um, Alzheimer's patients, because my mother had Alzheimer's or dementia, they at the, at the late stages, they start aspirating. So they're, you know, inhaling into their lungs things that they're drinking or food that they're eating. So this is a problem with the coronavirus. Um, and so it seems to be that there's a lot of fluid that builds up in the lungs. Uh, with now, I'm not a medical specialist, but that's just uh, what I've got—the little bit that I've gathered. So, SARS was much more deadly than coronavirus, and um, uh, I think I think SARS SARS had around a 10% mortality rate, I believe. Um, so, coronavirus has like between two and three percent mortality, much lower. And the flu, I don't know. The flu, it depends on the strain of the flu. The Spanish influenza at the end of World War One, and after World War One, that killed uh, 10 to 20 percent, up to 20 percent or so of people died, and it was killing a lot of younger people. So that's the danger of um, uh, of uh, the flu. That was a really deadly flu, and they didn't, they weren't, they didn't have the medical facilities to deal with it properly. But I think normal flus, it's less than 2%, I think. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, but the, <laughs> the hysteria over coronavirus is just ridiculous. Um, but anyway, so the Dr. Lee story, he's got us quite right, is just bullshit. Uh, side note, okay, so um, I, ha I um, have a video on my channel where um, – uh, Jeff J. Brown of the China Rising blog interviewed me. And at the time, I didn't have any issues with Jeff's, uh, Jeff's uh, information. And I, I had, had cited a lot of his information because he knows China really, really well. But I don't know what's going on with Jeff because he's gone off the rails. And I have to kind of distance myself from Jeff. Um, 
And I, I suspect that money is maybe, yeah, money, I think, is definitely an issue for him. So he's trying to drum up business, business, I guess, I don't know, and get donations. So he's been putting up some questionable stuff. And one was with a guy named uh, John Rachel who had this idea of the the peace dividend. And actually, John Rachel contacted me after I was criticizing him. And I didn't, I, I had contacted Jeff about John Rachel. And I didn't know that Jeff J. Brown and John Rachel were friends at the time. So that was a wake up call. Um, yeah, so I have some information that John Rachel gave me directly. But John Rachel is important in the context of a lot of fake People <laughs> fake left and they're these uh, people who, you know, criticize me for exposing what people like Max Blumenthal really are. Uh, so it's the fake left, the fake left. So John Rachel is a big part of the fake left. And unfortunately, Jeff J. Brown, he'll w work with everybody. And, you know, it's okay to work with people, but you have to say if they're on the wrong track or if they're spreading disinformation. Um, but Jeff doesn't seem to do that. He just accepts everything. So he's un either wittingly or unwittingly spreading disinformation. And I had mentioned that was uh, one of my focuses in my interview. Um, so another thing that Jeff, um, uh, there were some viewers of Scott's video who tipped off about apparently Jeff had posted on his blog and uploaded a video, which he claims um, YouTube removed. Um, but it was about, I don't know, he jumped on this story um, about bi biohazard waste boxes found at an evacuated U.S. consulate in Wuhan. And I don't know anything about this story. And I think he kind of jumped to conclusions um, looking for um, a smoking gun. Like, um, it's, there's no definitive proof, I think, to pin the coronavirus on uh, U.S. bioweapons, as a U.S. bioweapon. But the coincidences are kind of funny. So that's why, you know, I just, I think the coincidence is kind of strange. And it doesn't have to be a deadly disease because they're treating it as though we're deadly disease. So who knows, I don't know, uh, whether they introduced this virus into China, I don't know. But they're certainly <laughs> taking advantage of it and, and now calling it the China virus. I think in some media circles, they're calling it the China virus. But anyway, Jeff, he jumped to conclusions and he put this out. And it's it's not on his blog anymore, but it's on another website. And I actually archived it too. So this is the archive version that I archived. Um, so anyway, that's the story. So forget the Dr. Lee. He's not hes not a whistleblower. He's not a hero. Um, who knows if he's dead, you know, if he, if, he die, if he was exposed to the virus and he did die. Well, that's, I'm sorry about that. But um, who knows what the truth is. So, you know, the Chinese authorities are definitely suspicious about this whole thing. Um and uh, so the the real story is Dr. Dr. Zhang, you know, um, this uh, lady, Dr. Zhang, uh, Zhang Jishan, and the other Dr. Zhang who has ALS and he's still working. Zhang Ding. Okay, so I guess that's it for now. Um, uh, I'm trying to get things uh, worked out. I don't know. My husband and I, the apartment situation is a nightmare. I'm just exhausted from the whole thing. And I'm tired of being in a hotel room. And I'm not looking forward to going back to the apartment because um, we don't have a toilet or shower and not really a kitchen. And the, the place is just cluttered. And We've been offered the use of a, an empty one bedroom apartment in the building, but that's not really going to help us much. So my husband's looking 
for another place to live and actually a place to buy because it's uh, rental. I've never had this kind of problem with renting before. And it's been a nightmare and he's fed up and so he's ready to buy something locally. Um, if he can find something, I don't know. It's very expensive here. But anyway, that's that's all for now. Thanks for listening. And I will talk, I will give all these links in the show notes and uh, thanks for listening. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Bye.